welcome back to our Express Halloween special. Don't mind my outfit. I had a little run-in with Chomp back there. We're at Thomas FX in North Vancouver. This shop has been family-owned for over 40 years by Betty and John Quee. It's kind of like the Disneyland of Halloween all year long. Up in Pemberton, Lisa Bishop thinks about Halloween all year long and then brings her vision to life for that one special day. Gardens, a place of peace and tranquility. That is until Hallow's Eve when the dead rise from their graves. It's a one time a year you can actually be scary and morbid and kind of anything goes. <laughs> For Halloween enthusiast Lisa Bishop, expressing her dark side is a lighthearted adventure. Conjuring up characters and playing on people's fears is great fun. I do spend a lot of time thinking about it and talking about it, but it's, it's fun. You get to be creative a little bit and uh, just uh, get to express yourself, I guess, in a, in a different way. Lisa's obsession for black pointed hats started four years ago when she and her husband bought their Pemberton home. Since then, her collection of severed heads, personally designed characters, and other Halloween paraphernalia has taken over. As soon as we moved here, I was just like, yeah, I get to do it now. This year hopefully will be bigger than the other years. This year's horror flick worthy setup will include a handmade guillotine, body and spurting blood included. An eight foot tall mummy has also risen from the dead, along with a couple of scarecrows. I made two scarecrows this year. I went and got the wood from the logging roads and collected it to make the, the arms and the body, and that was a lot of fun. One of her high-flying favorites is a faceless witch that really adds to the spooky setting. There you go. She's just all electrical wire. It's holding out in the wind so far. On Hallow's Eve, a night that Lisa looks forward to all year long, skeletons will come out of the closet, and any evidence of a once serene garden setting will be long, bloody gone. You can find Lisa's house on the corner of Laurel and Lupin Streets in Pemberton. She's hoping that next year more of the houses in the neighborhood will get in on the decorating train. Hmm. I just might have an idea where they can find some amazing decor, stuff you can't find anywhere else. We're at Thomas FX in North Vancouver. This area is called the Dark Zone, and it's kind of like a haunted house all by itself. But what about a house that actually is haunted? We've got a ghost story for you up next. It's perhaps the most notorious of New Westminster's many haunted locations. Still, for curator Colin Stevens, Irving House is just his office. When I first came, I noticed that, but I'm more comfortable with the house now, and I really love it, so if, the, if there's any presences here, I think they sense that, and they don't bother me. Built in 1865, Irving House is one of BC's oldest residences. It was purchased by the city 60 years ago and turned into a museum. And that's when the creepy encounters began. One visitor came to the front door, was greeted by the tour guide in costume, and went through the house on a tour. At the end of the tour, the visitor asked about who was the other lady in costume standing behind you. Well, there was no staff scheduled, so we have no idea who that would have been. We have cases of a, a light that is known to oscillate. It hangs on a chain. And from time to time, for no known reason, it's been known to swing in a small circle. Staff have also reported the smell of burning candles throughout the house, even though as a museum, they're not permitted. Colin won't say for sure if the house is haunted, but concedes they're completely unexplainable occurrences. In older communities, you get more ghost stories that occur, and if you've seen something, then you tend to become a believer. This is the colonial home of Captain William Irving, a pioneer of steamboat travel along the Pacific Northwest. His family eventually settled in New Westminster in the 1860s, building this Victorian home where at least three generations of Irvings lived until 1950. The house was 
In general, I would say a happy house, uh, lots of children, and uh, they were well-to-do, so it was uh, a nice lifestyle for them. William Irving died suddenly inside the house in 1872 of natural causes, but it's unclear exactly whose spirit is the cause of all these paranormal activities. Some, however, believe at least one of the spirits is female. One of my predecessors uh, was working in the house and was going up the main staircase and just before reaching the top had a feeling that somebody was going to come down the stairs. There was nobody there, but he backed up against the wall and as if to allow somebody to go past. He would later reveal it was a woman's skirt he felt brush past him, perhaps the spirit of Mary, William's daughter, who also died in the house. Despite the mysterious visions, noises, and cold spots that have also been reported, Colin doesn't believe the ghosts are hostile or meddling. He says they're probably just enjoying the house as they did 150 years ago. We talk about it amongst the staff. Uh, we, we all love the house. We're not really bothered if there are any presences. They don't bother us. And we just sort of jokingly uh, laugh it off as, well, they love the house and we love the house. It's something that makes Irving House a museum like no other, where history comes back to say hello every now and again. I'm Tim Chung in New Westminster for The Express. The website is newwestpcr.ca. Irving House offers guided tours every weekend, not just over Halloween. That way you can see that bullet hole on the second floor up close and personal. You're watching our Express Halloween special, and we're going to focus on family fun up next. So I'm thinking that maybe Chomp and I should get cleaned up. After the break, the Steveston Scarecrow Crawl. A lot of businesses focus on who they are. What does that look like? A Batman. Halloween candy. Mm, the, what? the Express. We are your local voice, especially at Halloween. <laughs> oh. Community programming on Shaw has been generously sponsored in part by Hairstyling and Color Services for Shaw TV, provided by The Lounge Hair Studio. Loungehairstudio.com. I'm an island girl, but Vancouver's definitely home. I think home is where your happy place is. That's what I love about the Express. We meet people who are passionate about what they do. And we're not pretending to be something we're not. We're just celebrating who we really are. Welcome to the Express. I'm Johanna Ward. Today's show is all about you. We're at Thomas FX in North Vancouver, and they have pretty much everything you could need or want for Halloween here. Family fireworks, fake blood, all kinds of mass animated props. Maybe the only thing that they don't carry here? One of the most popular things this time of year, Halloween sweets. I love to eat, I love food, and I love everything sweet. Local chef and food writer Joanna Timkew is the ultimate Halloween hostess. This is something that kids can make with their parents or something that parents can do ahead of time and then put out at a kid's party. To test some of her Halloween treats, Joanna's enlisting the help of two kids. <laughs> well, two superhero kids, Gordy and Nico. There are all these classic candies coming back out. There's caramel apples everywhere, there are those marshmallows everywhere, and I thought, why not just make a different canvas? You see that, Nico? What does that look like? A Batman. And no, you're not seeing double. Joanna has enlisted the help of her twin sister, Sasha. We're gonna decorate marshmallows. How cool is that? We're gonna put icing on them and all kinds of candy and sprinkles. The marshmallows are really, really easy to make. You take a hot syrup and add it to gelatin in a stand mixer. Let it go for about 10 minutes. Then you have this big mass marshmallow cut into cubes, cut it into shapes, and there you go. Here we've got the bat-shaped marshmallow. So we're just gonna go over. Then we've got our bat outline. The second treat we're gonna make is candy apples. Caramel is so, so simple. All you do is take those little caramel cubes and then you add a splash of milk, a splash of condensed milk, and pop it in the microwave for a few minutes and then it's done. It's 
perfect. It's nice and hot and runny, just what we want. You just want to let your caramel set up a little bit. And then you can take a bowl full of sprinkles and just press your apple into it. We're also gonna put bloody bones all over them and make them nice and scary and make them with faces on them. The reviews are in. Mm, and while if the superhero kids like them, chances are yours will too. Unlike typical chocolate bars, Joanna says her treats let kids be creative. And hey, it's not all sugar. Apples are really, really good for you too, so don't forget that your kids will be eating an apple and it will be coated in 10 pounds of caramel. <laughs> I'm Bianca Salterbeck in Vancouver for The Express. According to a recent survey, the most popular kids' candy at Halloween, the Tootsie Roll, followed closely by Hershey's Milk Chocolate. I guess the raisins never really made it, hey? You're watching our Express Halloween special. Here's a popular costume idea, a little District 9. It's simple but effective, and you can find this and more here at Thomas FX in North Vancouver. You can also get ideas with our next story from the second annual Steveston Scarecrow Crawl. This scarecrow is not meant to scare away customers from the Blue Canoe restaurant, but is part of the second annual Steveston Scarecrow Crawl, on now through the end of October. Last year we had a total of about 50 scarecrows by the end of it. This year we'll probably hit 75. Um, there is a lot of creativity out there. Um, a lot of businesses focus on who they are um, and what their identity is to build their scarecrows. Um, so you'll be surprised from business to business, no doubt about that. One of the most unusual scarecrows is outside of Pieces on Moncton Street. Well, we kind of decided to go with a, a crow scare this year. Yeah, so our scarecrow uh, is essentially uh, a crow that decided to fool everybody in and dress up. Another business with a standout scarecrow display is the Hog Shack. My partner and I just uh, got together and tried to make something um, funny. John, my partner, put it together. It was his idea. and. Uh, yeah, people have been coming by taking lots of pictures up on it and, and enjoying it at least. Yeah, so we, we have a good time. The Steveston Merchants Association came up with the idea for the Scarecrow Crawl, and it's been good for the community and the businesses involved. Some of the merchants who maybe didn't know each other before are now kind of coming around, you know, maybe taking a look at the scarecrows. And so the scarecrows have, have, have kind of become a, a kind of a bonding thing amongst all of the merchants. Hey Jim, while I hold this, you want to make sure that brace is going to stay? It's you know, something that we're really trying to build up over the course of the next few years. And our goal is to eventually get to, uh, you know, hopefully a few hundred of them. Which is good news for visitors to Steveston. In Richmond, I'm Kendall Harris for The Express. The Scarecrow Crawl in Steveston runs to October the 31st. Actually, Richmond is a mecca for Halloween enthusiasts. At Country Farm Pumpkin Patch, they have a live band with dancing corn, Lansdowne Center, a ghost train, and a scarousel. There's also fireworks at Minaru Park for the Halloween bash. We now shine our spotlight on events happening in Vancouver, Burnaby, and Surrey. Fright Nights at Playland is a Halloween experience for the lovers of freak, horror, and terror. Disturbing haunted houses, freaky twilight rides, and a handful of monsters make for a deathly night out. All aboard the Haunted Forest Scream Train in Surrey's Bear Creek Park. This frightful train ride into the dark forest will be loaded with nighttime creatures designed to have you screaming, laughing, and having a great time. Spend Halloween at the Burnaby Museum Haunted Village. Vampires welcome you to explore the village in the dark, and your night will be filled with monsters, witches, mummies, and more. And to visit Canada's scariest Halloween store, it's right here, Thomas FX in North Vancouver. You can also watch for our Shaw Pumpkin Patrol out on the night of October the 31st. You can find out more information at shaw.ca. You're watching The Express, only on Shaw TV. Happy Halloween!